Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's a sci-fi comedy that came out on August 9th, 1985, which, surprisingly enough, it's criminally underrated. It didn't get any good reviews when it came out, and this was also at the time when we had films like Back to the Future, Weird Science, and Real Genius. So they figured, well, they wanted another one. It had a cold following after it flopped at the box office and yeah it totally bombed all right but then in on home video as well as laserdisc and and dvd releases yeah one for anchor bay which is now out of print and the 2004 touchstone dvd release which it it might still be available in stores i mean if you could find it just now they just released the uh, the brand new uh, Blu-ray release, which I just got right here, and this film is called My Science Project, which, surprisingly enough, in Sweden, it's actually called Time Busters, mostly because this movie is basically like Ghostbusters meets Back to the Future. So there you go. <laughs> but My Science Project fits the bill. Because you got a great cast right here. You know, John Stockwell, who's been best known for his role in Christine. And he later went on to do the film Top Gun. And I know he was in that terrible film, Dangerously Close. Yeah. <laughs> but he also has uh, Fisher Stevens, who went on to play uh, Ben in the film Short Circuit 1 and 2. And all his other stuff that he's been in later on, like... He went on to do the short-lived TV series Key West and the TV show Early Edition, who played uh, Gary Hobson's uh, best friend, Chuck Frischman. And plus, you also got Dennis Hopper in the film, too, who's sadly no longer with us, but in fact, yesterday would have been his 80th birthday. But either way, he was very good in this movie, too, and also has some great actors, so... Uh, that went on to, to do bigger and better things. And I really enjoyed this movie. I um, didn't think it was that bad. Um, it didn't deserve all the bad reviews it's been getting. I mean, yeah, it only had like a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. It only had one that's actually fresh from this quote right here at the bottom from a New York Times film critic, Stephen Holden. And you know what? I agree with him, too. I, I actually love the special effects that this movie had. The team of Stan Winston actually worked on the, uh, the effects of this film, so this was long before you know, Jurassic Park was, uh, was one of the biggest phenomenons at all time. But this was the 80s, so things were different back then. So, yeah. I mean, it's dated, but still... It was perfect. Anyway, this release just came out recently by Mills Creek, which, surprisingly enough, has a very nice HD transfer. In fact, it looks a lot better than the previous releases that both Anchor Bay and even Touchstone release had been, uh, both on DVD. And hell, it even looks better than the, the previous uh, Laserdisc release in home video. But sad to say, though, the audio could have been a whole lot better than this. It's in two-channel mono. It should have been in Dolby Digital Surround Sound. That's 5.1 Master Audio uh, for HD. Which I think this movie would have sound more spectacular because this film was a crypt in Dolby Stereo. It was actually shot in Dolby Stereo the way it was meant to be. And when they put it on DVD... That's exactly how it sounded. So, this is just basically one of Mills Creek's fuck-ups. And this wasn't the only release that they just had this problem. They had this problem with uh, The Legend of Billie Jean, which was another 1985 film. That got suffered from that uh, the two-channel mono business. You know, that's one thing that bothers me. But why are they using mono in older films that came out in the 80s? that were encrypted in Dolby Stereo from the beginning. I mean, seriously, I, I know Mills Creek is a budget company, but they really deserve better than that. I mean, they have done some mistakes in the past, but 
but they had better transfers as it turns out and, and they have better sound they really need to fix this and I hope they do in the future but because I know they had done a disc replacement for the movie Hudson Hawk uh, the Bruce Willis film from 1991 because that too had mono and they fixed that problem when they re-released it so what gives? I mean this movie deserves better because I, I do love the cover art that they chose which is de definitely taken from the 2004 release as you can tell it does have the back right there <laughs> and uh, the spine <laughs> and there you go you can see <laughs> all the sparks but it just looks amazing I really enjoyed it but anyway let's get to the review of this film because I really enjoyed this movie I mean I do wish it wasn't forgotten but here you go it stars John Stockwell with Daniel von Zernick Fisher Stevens Raphael Savarge Richard Messer Barry Corbin and Retchworth and Dennis Hopper. The movie began somewhere in 1957. A mysterious UFO had crash landed into the United States military base where President Dwight D. Eisenhower had discovered it while the Army base and scientists had worked on it just to see how what was going on. But he told them to just get rid of it. So then, 28 years later, in 1985, somewhere in a local high school in Carson, a high school student named Michael Harlan, who's played by John Stockwell, who's just basically interested in muscle cars that he loves to fix, to build, and to ride on, especially since he has that awesome... Uh, red muscle car. Anyway, his best friend is Vince Latello, who's played by Fisher Stevens, who's a wise-cracking jockey, mostly because he loves to hang out with the ladies and makes a lot of cracking jokes about what he watches on on TV and movies. <laughs> yeah, and he stole the show from me, too. He was about to uh, pass high school in order for him to get a diploma. The only problem is he has to pass his science class, but he couldn't find anything that's scientific. So that's what uh, Dr. Bob Roberts, who's played by Dennis Hopper, who actually was a former ex-60s hippie, <laughs> hard to believe, because he's pretty much just playing the, the role that he played in Easy Rider. But I guess he just wants to, once again, just play the same image like he did, like he just played him in the... In Apocalypse Now as a photographer and then later in 1990 with the film Flashback where he was just a criminal you know just taking over um, a young FBI agent <laughs> so there you go <laughs> he wanted him to um, pass the class so that's really affecting his schedule and while that's been going on his friend, who is basically just a bookworm, named uh, Ellie Sawyer, who's played by Daniel Bonzernick, who's just reporting him about what he does with her nerdy friend Sherman. She decided to make a deal with him to go on a date. You know, just after she actually uh, informed him to fix her car. So during that night, it turns out that his date was to actually sneak inside the United States Air Base in order to find something that's scientific. He fell inside the fallout shelter till suddenly he found something that was glowing and it turns out to be a time generator that has a globe that's kinda of like one of those electric globes where you, you touch your hand and suddenly your hair starts to pop up you know, and starts to move. Yeah, one of those things. Yeah, he took it up, and suddenly the power had shut off um, his car, 
and as well as the flashlights that he has uh, when he was down there. So, so that's where he found out that it, it is one of those power generators that that just shuts out the power. The next day he was about to clean the device in, at his auto shop class with Vince and then when he was about to connect it to the the boom box the the power starts to shut off and then he started to use the the automatic battery from the car and all of a sudden an ancient Egyptian vase had magically appeared Michael and Vince were about to head back to class until they discover that they actually flash forward into time so now it turns out that this device is a time warp device so now they discover that from uh, Dr. Roberts that that um, that this whole thing was actually a gizmo yeah he refers to it and that he actually zapped into time transported him to another dimension so what happened was after Dr. Roberts had transported into the device, once they tried it out for himself, their, their solution was to have Michael, along with um, Ellie and Vince, to actually shut off all the power lines by grabbing up a stick of dynamite that's inside a hardware store yeah, where he lives with his father, who owns the hardware store. It was played by Barry Corbin, who also was about to um, about to plan on marrying their uh, stepmother, who was basically an, an Avon t uh, store type lady. And so what they did was they were about to go heading out all the way to the power lines, just when the power was about to start tracing all, all the other power lines. They actually hooked up the dynamite, and and once the, it hits to the the last uh, power line, the whole thing explodes. But then they got arrested because the power has been shut off. Um, they did arrest the the other teenagers who basically just uh, <laughs> just put some um, some uh, shaving cream and all. And all of that and into his car yeah but they were lucky enough they got arrested because they thought they were the ones who shut off the power but then they got arrested too and until it starts to happen again once um, they went back to the high school uh, Ellie was um, was with Sherman just trying out the device and it just creates the the time warp and that's when it gets worse when by the time Michael Vince and and of course Sherman just when they're trying to look for Ellie they uh, they went inside the high school and they discover that that they're actually um, in a time warp with all the a bunch of Vietnam War soldiers with a mix of mutants and dinosaurs and all of that <laughs> and then and then they finally save Ellie who just uh, who just got knocked out from the device that they started that Sherman did and and then Michael decided to save her and by actually going inside the, the dimension to fix this problem and once that's over, they now finally uh, got out of school. And then after that, Dr. Roberts had finally showed up inside wearing that costume that he wore in Easy Rider. Because <laughs> so, he actually discovered now, he finally discovered the 60s. And and, uh, <laughs> and he gets to, he actually had a chance to watch uh, Woodstock and all that. But he got arrested mostly because... He was responsible for the power lines being shut off, I mean, since he disappeared. And while he just gave um, Michael an A for the support, he decided to tell him to get rid of it. So that way they 
just to tell them that it's they're not ready for that. So they went back to the shelter at the uh, military base, returned it, and then <laughs> then his car broke down and died, and then they just walked around. And there you go. And then the movie ends. And <laughs> I really enjoyed this movie a lot. I, I thought it was just a very fun film. And I just wish um, it wasn't long forgotten as it turned out. But I would say <laughs> it was just hilarious, mostly coming from uh, Vince uh, Latello, you know, played by Fisher Stevens, of course, because he, he does come up with all these funny quotes, such as, uh, you know, when the, the scene where he got arrested and he had those sunglasses that he wears. Uh, the cop says, hey kid, why do you wear sunglasses at night? Because when you're cool, the sun shines you 24 hours a day. <laughs> and, and then, I, I also love his moments was when he was uh, driving in his car with, with his girl. Suddenly, uh, a driver was uh, right behind him and, <laughs> and he actually pulled up... Uh, the middle finger that's an electric on the back and he says <laughs> sit on this butt plug <laughs> oh man I, I mean there there are a lot of funny moments that he that he comes up with um, and I, I I just <sighs> there, there's just so many of them but he, he stole the show for me um, that's what I love about Fisher Stevens. He's a great actor. You know, he he's also very underrated too, and he definitely shows what what he can do when when he plays those roles. Uh, John Stockwell as Michael, he he did a great job. I mean, given the fact that I believe this is his, um, it might be his first lead role, but then again, he probably did some other films before this. I mean, I know after Christine, but here. I mean, we get to see him actually um, hanging around with his best friend. And I thought they, they worked together as a team. I mean, they, they definitely sparked great chemistry. And also, um, uh, Daniel Von uh, Zernick uh, as Ellie, yeah, I, I thought she was very beautiful, considering that she's basically, you know, a, a bookworm type, so it's, it's, it's cool. Even though she... <laughs> She didn't want to get involved in this, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was cute. I'm be very beautiful, too. And I love Dennis Hopper playing the role as uh, Dr. Bob Roberts. I mean, definitely he, he definitely shows that, you know, he was really enjoying this when he played him. Because that's where he get, he get his chance to actually play the, once again, a 60s hippie. <laughs> I mean, I, I know, because that was at the end of the movie, but but he really did enjoy it, considering, you know, this was basically a small role for him. But the whole film just pretty much follows it, too. Uh, I love the special effects that they had. I mean, I know it's dated, but, hey, it, it was ahead of its time. I mean, I, I like the shot with the, the dinosaur, was when the, yeah, because they had all the guns that they stole from the, the soldiers. They shut down all the guys, creatures, such as the caveman, and they were shooting down a T-Rex, yeah, a dinosaur from the Lost World that's inside a gymnasium while Vince got picked up and suddenly he fell, yeah, injured his arm and leg, and he says, uh, 17 years of TV down the drain, and and yeah, the also the scene with the caveman where he says, "We just shoot down Wawa." <laughs> oh man! Also, the nerdy geek Sherman is played by Raphael Bar Savarj. It's it's like he's really enjoying it. I mean, yes, he he started out as just you know your typical nerdy uh, geek and then then he just got <laughs> so intense over it like he just he just enjoys it once he started using the the time warp device but even though 
you know, he really made a huge mistake when he did this, but but then it's like he, he pretty much knows all the history beyond all of that and, and he just wants to he just wanna kick your ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I, I guess they knew they, they kind of felt like, you know, this was going to be like Ghostbusters right there when it comes to having um, three guys together, you know, trying to, to stop um, the dimension that's happening. But it's actually interesting to see, you know, a lot of history that, that had to happen inside the halls of, of high school, inside a foggy ground, you know, kind of similar to the foggy ground you saw in, in Ghostbusters. Oh, but wow. <laughs> but it was really cool. Um, it, it was very impressive. Uh, uh, the, the Stan Winston team actually worked on the the, the creatures that they had, uh, like the, the cavemen. Oh, th there was a funny line in, in that movie was when they killed the, the cavemen. Uh, they, they said, uh, I don't believe this. I could be home watching Mad Them. And Michael's just saying, would you stop whining? Whining? Bubba Walt, Bunny Rubble has just tried to flame me out. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, I, I'm just coming up with some other jokes that I'm trying to find out. It did have its problems. Uh, I'll give you that, but otherwise, um, it was okay. In fact, they, they even said it was the, f um, as it was advertised, the funniest uh, comedy of the summer. <laughs> but it wasn't a hit though, sadly. Yeah, I wish it was. But uh, it, it was a fun flick. Um, very underrated. Um, definitely check it out. Um, pick, pick out the Blu-ray or maybe find the DVD if you have a chance just so you can listen to the film in uh, Dolby Digital Surround Sound the way it was meant to be. Because it definitely is the, the real, even though it isn't really the real mix, but it is um, the perfect mix for the movie. to sound much better than the, the two-channel mono that the Mills Creek uh, Blu-ray release had. But yeah, it's a fun film. Check it out. So anyway, I give uh, my science project three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.